Hello everybody and welcome to another evening of Nail Inspiration, another evening of Nail Talk Live. And today we have a full program with a lot of di different demonstrations. Yeah, a lot of nail art and uh, well, some technical things. Yeah, so yeah. for all of you we have something to enjoy. And unlike the other evenings that we did Nail Talk Live, we are actually going to discuss uh, while watching the demonstration, what's happening, which products are used, and why she chose uh, the people are using those products. So it's a little bit a different setup, a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm excited to see how that happens yeah. and how it will be. Yeah. Aren't you missing your tech table? Yeah, a bit. A little bit. Yeah. Well, what you don't know at home is that we're taping this on Thursday morning, and in a couple of hours from now, you're going to do a live workshop. Yeah. on Facebook, yes. showing your stamping nail art. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I've got a lot to tell, and uh, I've got a lot to, uh, to, to look at, to, uh, to see. So um, it will be uh, well, a bit longer than an hour, I, I think. Yeah, because stamping is stamping, but you can tell so much about stamping, and so yeah. many different techniques and products, and well, let's Yeah, to be honest, when, when we discussed uh, creating stamping plates for magnetic nail design, I thought to myself, stamping plates, why would we want to have stamping plates? But then we created them because there was a demand and then you started to create nail art with it and it was just amazing. Yeah. Because I never knew that you could do all of that with stamping, with chromes, with pigments, with uh, uh, shadowing them, uh, creating coloring compositions, yeah. coloring in. It is really perhaps something that we can do in another English version of the show yeah. as well. Sounds cool. Um, this Wednesday evening we did Nail Talk Live in Dutch. As you know, Magnetic Nail Design is a Dutch brand from the Netherlands. And as all of you, we are also faced with a corona crisis. And this has led us to a moral obligation towards our nail technicians to start creating a protocol that enables the nail technician to work in this corona period of time. In a protocol, this is a Dutch protocol, and we as market leader in the Netherlands felt the obligation to assist the nail technician and also assist the government to create a protocol that's workable for the nail tech and the client in this one and a half meter economy. The difficulty in the Netherlands, but I think that's also the case in other countries, is that a nail technician, nail styling, is not um, a brand or is it's not a, how can I say this? Uh, we, nail technicians are not in a union mm -hmm. and um, normally the union would create a protocol as it does for hairdressers or beauticians. However, here in Holland we don't have a union for nail technicians and we decided to do this. In this protocol that is about keeping a safe distance, maintaining proper and uh, standard hygiene rules and it also is about um, uh, how to work in your salon the, the logistics of maintaining a salon. In this protocol, we decided to uh, create a protective screen for the nail technicians that sit between the nail tech and the client to protect at least each other from possible coughing, a sneezing, or a splattering other things. Let's have a look at the tech table where uh, we have the screen for you to see. The screen is made of polycarbonate, and not of plexiglass, because this is resistant to alcohol, so you can clean it with a disinfectant. It's one meter wide, 75 centimeters high, and has a little hole where you can put your hands through of 40 centimeters by 25 high. And this is one of the measurements that we decided to put in the protocol. Yeah. And I'm really glad, and as of um, many nail stylists, because we now have a guideline so this is how uh, we can work, I hope soon. But yeah, yeah it gives we hope within the, uh, within the next four weeks, Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. I also think that most of the clients are really anxious to get their nails done again. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, look at me, my hair, it's totally out of control. Yeah. I, I, the first thing that I want to do when, I, when I'm able to is have everything done and fixed yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I never knew that I was so dependent on things. <laughs> Uh, of course, proper hygiene is important in this period of corona. Um, the basic rule here in the Netherlands is that if somebody is, has a um, flu or a cold, that they should not leave their home. If somebody in a family has a fever, the whole family should stay at home uh, and see it through. 
So, um, we, of course, we also maintain that ground rule. Yeah. And then adding to that, uh, not more than one client in the nail studio in, in one single time, uh, washing the hands, uh, using a disinfectant, uh, protecting yourself with gloves, with a dust mask. So a lot of things that we are busy with. However, purely focused on the Netherlands. Yes. Of course, we also want to help our distributors throughout the world and our trainers to make a protocol for themselves that works, mm -hmm. but it's always in accordance with the government. Yeah, different countries, different rules. Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to go too deep in, in it now, because we want to have a fun evening, but I do want you to know that we take this moral obligation very seriously and that we strive and uh, fight to be able to do nails again. In the meantime, however, we have, of course, our trainers throughout the world that we ask to create nice videos for us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go through those videos, we're going to discuss it together. Yeah. And the first one, the, I, I'm... Natalia. Natalia. Natalia is showing us uh, a beautiful, well, a bit technical, yeah. uh, elongation. And then uh, she is working with uh, the aqua colors yeah. and a bit of glass gel and a bit of flakes and a bit... Wow. Well, let's see. So she created first on the high-tech form an almond-shaped nail using power gel, clear as a base, and she created a nail bed using power gel nude. And now she's using... So this is liner white. That's really perfect uh, out of her uh, palette. Yeah, this is so you can keep it uh, in yeah. your drawer. Yeah. And she's painting the whole free edge first white with liner gel white. Uh, so that the aqua colors that you, you she will use later on will be more visible. Yeah, because of the white background, your color will pop more. So Jessica's choice. Yes, your own brush. Yeah. And she's using that to create or paint the wall of yeah. the smile line. This gives it a lot of definition. Eh? Yeah, it's really, really, it, it's necessary. Yeah, it makes it pop. Yeah. And creates a very crisp smile line. Mm -hmm. Of course, be careful, but if you go on top of the nail bed itself, because uh, it's already filed, you don't have to worry because she's going to file later on again. This is now cured for one and a half minutes and now in a coat of extreme matte. You also used uh, extreme matte with uh, aqua colors? Uh, yes, yes, because the aqua colors uh, will tend to, uh, you need roughness in your surface. So the extreme matte will give that to you. And you can play around. Uh, Extreme Matte does not have a sticky layer, but if you remove some mm -hmm. of the, um, well, the sheer, or well, yeah. how do you say, uh, with, uh, for instance, a uh, prep and wipe or finishing, your uh, aqua colors will run more. But yeah, Natalia chose uh, not to, so your aqua colors stay more in place. So di directly out of the light after one and a half minutes, yes. she's working on the matte top coat, um, extreme matte top gel, and now she's adding the blue aqua colors, giving and beautiful drops. Yes. Yeah, yeah th so you can see that you can use the aqua colors for inlay designs, but also for uh, on top of the nail. Yeah. It, it doesn't lose any of its. Uh, Depth of color no. when you use it inlay? No, it doesn't. I do rec recommend uh, as a top layer uh, the Supreme uh, finish because of the UV uh, blocker, stopper. Yeah, 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 the UV yeah. filter. Yeah. UV oh, filter. now she's adding, of course, the glass gel polish, the oh, dark yes. blue. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, and she's using the detailer number three. I, I keep on seeing people using the detailer number three quite a lot. I when love that brush to work yeah. with gels as well. Yeah. I like, I love it as well. And this is the shadow. Yeah. So we first have the crispness of the white and then the shadow of the gel polish, glass, and then the aqua colors on, on the nail. Mm -hmm. It's already very cool. She didn't cure, I think. Uh, no, because you need some st you uh, need stickiness. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because of the opals. Yeah, these are the crushed opals, and the crushed opals are actually, uh, of course, man-made, they're synthetic, but uh, they have to grow for nine months in the laboratory, laboratory to create the depth and the sparkle inside the opals. That was quite amazing when I saw that actually yeah. happening. Yeah, we have different colors. Yeah. I really love the magenta as well. Yeah, well, I love opals. Yeah. I really yeah. love opals. And really beautiful to work with, uh, with inlay. 
because of your wall you have built and you've created depth over there, so you can build a bit, a bit of a, you could put some yeah. bigger things over I there. I guess she's now adding a clear gel. Because she needs a sticky layer again for chameleon flakes. And I don't them. think this is extreme mud that she used. She uses probably base on top. Yeah. Because if she would use extreme mud and you cure it, then it, the aqua color seems to disappear a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So when everything is cured, just finish the free edge using power gel, clear, or standard builder gel, clear, or any other builder gel. Uh, you could even use acrylic clear, yeah, if you want. Of course, yeah. Be careful when you work with power gel clear that you don't overwork it to uh, prevent air bubbles. And if you have an air bubble, just take a pin or a needle and puncture it, and it yeah. will uh, slowly settle down. After about 10 seconds cure, you pinch the nail using the expert tool for pinching. And then before going back in the light, you use a transparent gel clamp to fixate the C-curve in place. And it's transparent, so when you go in the light, then it still cures in the desired C-curve shape. So cure for one and a half minutes. And then when it's finished, filed and finished, of course, as That's you supreme. said, supreme yeah. finish. Yeah. The easy trainer is what she's holding. It's a silicone finger that you can put your nail bed in, or in a tip, and it works ideal if you want to create shapes. And it, you, you have a lot of uh, freedom of movement, mm -hmm. as you can see, because she really rotates the finger. I always love the moment when you see the shine over the inlay, yeah. and you see what's happening in that nail. She's keeping us in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> Natalia is an, uh, one of our international trainers and ambassador, as we call that, for the Russian-speaking countries. A dear friend of ours and uh, one of the best trainers that I know. As you can see, underneath the white. So it's almost a white Louboutin version. Yeah. Beautiful. I would love to have 10 of those nails. Mm. We love Natalia. Yeah. And don't forget to follow her on Instagram, Natalia Gritsenka Magnetic. Oh, I love also, I, I still love almond nails. Yeah. The shape yeah. of an almond nail, I think, is the most feminine, elegant shape. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I love that beautiful shape. Yeah. yeah. Or stiletto. Yeah. Yeah. But then it <laughs> needs to be like a really a stiletto. <laughs> Well, in my time when I started, an almond nail was called a stiletto, uh, and what we now c and what was considered an almond nail was actually more a round nail. Yeah, yeah. Very little <laughs> nail. Yeah. Oh, how the industry changed in the in the last twenty years. Well, I'm really happy that stiletto is coming back. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's really I'm coming really back. Happy. Yeah. Of course, we had the whole modern shape thing, modern element, and, and, and uh, all of the modern nails that uh -huh. are very flat and, and, and very different. Uh, I stopped doing nails when it was the modern period of doing nails. So did you, are you into the whole modern nail thing? No, no. I still, I still love, I always loved uh, stiletto and, and the almond uh, yeah. shape. Yeah, yeah and Ballerina. also the curvature. Uh, if I look at your natural or your own nails, just a beautiful upper arch, very feminine, soft, yeah. instead of the whole very strong thing. But there is a time for everything, of course, yes. and a lot of people love the technical aspect of mm -hmm. those modern nails. Mm -hmm. Before we go to the next demonstration, which is Yulia, we're first going to check out the commercial for the aqua colors. And mm. we, are in, we are so happy and, and privileged to have an art department that is able to create all, the, all of those things. Yeah. 
I just have to ask for new commercials. <laughs> but we're working on a couple of them. Uh, flowers. Do you like flowers in designs? Um, well, I'm <laughs> starting to. <laughs> Back in the days, <laughs> I hated flowers, as I hated stamping. But that's a different story. Um, but now, yeah, I'm starting with flowers and I'm beginning to love uh, flowers. You're yeah. actually going to show us a flower also later yeah. on in the show. A yeah. Jostevo technique. Mm -hmm. But before we go there... We first have uh, Julia Koncharova, and she's showing us a, a different way of creating flowers. It, it's more, yeah, it's a different way. Yeah, let's so. go see. So she uses a red gel polish as a base and then liner black to outline first very thin the flower petals and it's like a row of flower petals. Mm -hmm. And now she's adding shade but again liner gel black. Yeah and after curing of course. After curing. And she's using the angled flower brush yeah. to create this shade which is of course because I think I that she only that. Takes, takes it at the very tip of yeah. the angle yeah. so that when you smooth it out you go, you'll get the shadow immediately. Just a little bit also in between to separate the flowers from each other. And now she's working on... On the flower. Yeah. Red glass gel polish. And this is also after cure. After curing. Just to give a little bit of a nuance, a shade to the flower and then adding some shadows. Yeah, so she's going into the red with the blue so it gets a bit purple. Yeah. Yeah, because you can mix everything together, right? Eh? Yeah, I really love the glass polishes. Again, curing and now with liner gel white, using the same angle brush. So that's really the first time that I actually see that. Yeah. So we're going to work on that. Yeah, yeah, I need to try that. And gently blending uh, the highlights. The highlights. The highlights are now petal. quite strong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wouldn't... It, of course, she's going to... Cover this a little bit yes, later. Yes, eh? later on she's going to cover it with, uh, again, glass gel polishes. And so to it soften it a little bit. Yeah, a lighter shade. That's beautiful. Yeah, and it's, uh, I think this works really well in a full set of uh, red nails and that you do this on only one or two. Yeah. Because it blends in really yeah. well. And now she's adding a little bit more liner gel white to, uh, to highlight the highlight a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> And so black. again with black. Separating everything. Yeah. Giving definition. The black is really the best for definition, eh? Yeah, yeah, it is. And Especially on red. I found red, uh, well, I find it a different, uh, a difficult color to uh, add nail art on. But I really love this. Yeah, because the color itself is so dominant already. Mm -hmm. But you use a lot of red in combination with black when it comes to gel polishes full color, eh? Yeah. And then little dotskis mm -hmm. using, I guess, Katharina's Choice yeah, brush. Yeah, I think so too. Tiny, tiny dotskis. And these center the flower, so it gives you a clear definition of the middle part of the flower, making it uh, visually easier to see exactly what's happening. And now she's uh, added some black to the center of the flower. Yeah. Cure that and a top coat. Beautiful. Julia Koncharova, don't forget to follow her as well. She's doing a lot of demo videos. And yeah, she's uh, really uh, active. active on uh, on Facebook and uh, yeah. showing, well, maybe every week a different kind of yeah. demo. Yeah, so you should follow her on Facebook as well. And she has, like yourself, a very own style. Yeah, she does. Yeah, It's, it's not very girly. It's more a little bit... Um, yeah, stronger, yeah. a little bit more yeah. oomph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as we already discussed earlier, of course you're now slowly getting into flowers. And the technique that you showed last Wednesday in the show uh, is Jostevo. Mm -hmm. And what is Jostevo? Well, it's a, a painting technique from uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. And um, well, in the Jostevo technique, uh, they uh, work on black backgrounds mostly. Well, just on yeah, black ba yeah, backgrounds yeah. and a lot of flowers but using because of the black uh, backgrounds all of your colors will pop more uh, because of the the brightness of the colors yeah, the contrast uh, again the contrast yeah 
Yeah. It's, it's a difficult technique, though. Yeah, it is, but it's really a fun technique. And mm. I'm using a uh, liner gel, so it's easy. Mm -hmm. and, and, of course, the glass gel polishes. Yeah, to give the color. Yeah. Like yeah. one stroke, Jostovo is a folk art. Mm -hmm. And you can see it in Russia on furniture, on, on, oh, on little everything. pillboxes, uh, really a lot. Uh, in Holland, we also have a version of folk art called Hindelopen. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, a little bit simpler. Just of all, <laughs> sounds a bit uh, well more beautiful than Hindelope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 I totally agree. But then again, Dutch is not really a beautiful language, huh? Well, With all of the and stuff. Not always, but it has <laughs> its moments. Okay, let's check out Jessica's Just of all. So I've already created uh, the heart, the center of uh, my flower, using a little bit of chameleon flakes, and then kept that with the extreme matte top gel. Yeah, and now you're starting to create the petals. This is a peony type yeah. flower, eh? Yeah. So it's more closed. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, layer of petals are uh, moving upwards, so yeah. to the heart of the, the flower, closing the chameleon flakes. Almost like an artichoke. Yeah. 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 I find it's a very difficult flower to make. I try and try, I try, I try, but I just don't see it in, in when I'm working. I, I, I get lost. You get artichokes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, or a cauliflower. <laughs> so you also added the flower petals going downward. Going down, yeah. Using the Detailer 3 brush. And again, uh, if we work on the uh, matte surface, yeah. your liner gel uh, will, will slide more. Easily. Yes, and it also gives it real relief. Yes. So I'm adding uh, leaves, really looking uh, to, uh, to my flower in the middle of the, the nail. Mm -hmm. So I'm going up and I'm going down with one leaf to give it more, well, a beautiful design. Then. Yeah, more movement. More movement. So I'm really pressing on my brush and then slowly picking it up. Yeah, lifting it up to lifting create a little a, a slanted or pointed end. Mm -hmm. And of course, in a diagonal, you're working to give it a sense of, uh, this is strange what I'm saying, but a sense of symmetry. Yes. Because it moves over the nail. Mm -hmm. And you really always hold your brush like a pen, eh? Yes. <laughs> so you this is cured, cured this. yeah. And now the glass gel polishes. And because they are transparent, it's really beautiful if you work on black. Yeah. You can go over it and you do not see where the glass polishes uh, touches the black. Now, the only one that you have to be a little bit careful the, with the is pink. the pink. Yeah. Because it has a little bit of a, a brownish, yeah. orangey color yeah. on the black. And then this is still not cured, eh? you're no. just blending and blending just and blending. Just blending it in because you can mix all of the colors together. And that's really cool. When I look at this, I can also see like an Indian uh, design. Ooh, yeah. And now the flower. You have some shadow there where the petals that go down and upward meet. Yeah. To yeah. separate it a little bit. And I'm adding later on, uh, again, uh, the liner gel black to uh, create more shade. So just at the tip of my uh, flower, here and there, a little bit of yellow uh, glass polishes. It's really beautiful. To give it the highlight definition. So now I'm just adding a bit of liner gel black and then um, rolling my brush up, mm -hmm. so your brush is uh, clean and dry, mm -hmm. and then fade out onto the color. So you're actually taking it over the color? Yeah, a bit. The cool thing with using the black is that it pulls it into the nail as well. Mm -hmm. So using Jessica's choice, following giving my outlines to my flower with black, liner gel. Yeah. And now if you would use uh, the pink gel polish mm -hmm. and uh, went over the black, now you can fix that. And of course highlights. And highlights. A design is not uh, cured, not perfect without a highlight. But not too much, eh? Just be, be sp sp yeah. sparing full. Yeah. Use it sparing full because it adds more to the effect. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful. So cured that for one and a half minutes, and then I've uh, uh, kept that with the basin top. Yeah. 
Uh, and there you see the real Josefo, because Josefo is always very full. Full, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of a lot of flowers, flowers, a lot of color, yeah. 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 So that also makes it relatively easy to create a tableau on the nail, mm -hmm. because it just continues and continues and continues and yeah. continues. Yeah. And adding just a little bit, a few spots to create a little bit of little small flowers mm -hmm. and a couple of leaves, and yeah. I really love that technique. Yeah, yeah, I, I adore it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to do it, but I adore it. Hope you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you used a lot of the... Everybody's using th the Through the Looking Glass gel polishes a lot yeah. now. And it's really an amazing product. It's really created by... Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it helps you to create the most fantastic designs. So before we go to the last demo of tonight, we will have the commercial for Through the Looking Glass transparent gel polishes. that we actually should update this commercial yeah. because uh, I created the designs that you see in the commercial but now we have so much more inspiration and, and people are using it that are creating beautiful things that uh, it doesn't really do justice to the great product that because, it is. Well, when we first saw that commercial we were in awe but now, just a few weeks, <laughs> how long yeah. is it? Uh, uh, the beginning of February, yeah, yeah. Uh, IDM. A few months, yeah, of course. And now we are really, wow, amazed. Yeah. Amazed yeah. by that product. Yeah. Uh, we love it. Really. And we should also show it more perhaps as an inlay design. Yeah. Because you can build also the nail with mm -hmm. it. So it's strong enough to create a nail. So that is something that is perhaps not uh, focused on enough. But that doesn't matter. The person who really set a trend using the gel polish, glass gel polishes, and did some things that really inspired us both. But really, yeah. yeah. And, and I she think the went whole live, industry. and yeah. we both were uh, well uh, preparing for Nail Talk Live yeah. at night, and we were both on our phone, like this, <laughs> <laughs> doing a little bit of makeup, but still <laughs> looking at the phone. What is she doing? What? Oh, 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 oh that's, that's the right. trick. Yeah. <laughs> that was really a fun, fun yeah, evening, it was. and we incorporated it immediately in the show. Yes, yes. It was and a fun uh, show. she's Julia Vorobieva is from Russia. Uh, she has uh, two businesses and she's a magnetic trainer. She works together with Marina Fialko. And the good thing with Julia Vorobieva, but I also think that that goes for the other magnetic trainers, is that she works from the possibilities of the product mm -hmm. and not from the desired design reference point. So she takes the product and she starts to think, okay, what can I create with this product? What are the possibilities? And then she just... Continues and continues and continues and continues and continues. And then mixing products together. Yeah. And, and In the most unlikely fashion. Yeah. Because sometimes they think, oh, why is she doing that? And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah. that's yeah. why she's doing that. And we have another example of her artwork. And that's beautiful. a peacock feather. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's Again. have it look. So she's going to create a nail, and this is the Black as Black gel polish. A black, uh, we use a lot of Black as Black, and she's using this on the black color pop to give it a, a, yeah, a better surface to work on, mm -hmm. but also because she wants to use the foil gel, uh, the, the yeah. foil. Yeah, and she and needs a sticky layer yeah. for that. So after 30 seconds, just use any nail art foil and just pat it on there, and it gives a little bit of shine. And she uses that later on as well in the design. Yeah, and different kinds. 
So this is a transparent and gold. And she does this a lot. Yeah. I actually am using the foils now as well. And yeah. We I spoke about it yesterday. Now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of a sudden we love foil. Neon green gel polish. So it's important to, to let you know that neon green gel polish is semi-transparent. Yeah. So if you want a neon effect, then you have to apply a thin coat of white underneath. Mm -hmm. But in this case, the transparency really works because this specific color is a color that we don't have in the concentrates no. or the gel, uh, glass no. gel polishes. So another example of mm -hmm. how she's mixing things. Extreme Mud. Like you and I, she loves to work on Extreme Mud because it makes it so much easier to create your artwork on. Yeah. And give it a good cure. Liner Gel Black. You can also see uh, that she works really sparingly with the product. She never uses too much. No. She really, yeah, loves her product. And now creating the first outline of an upside down heart shape. Mm -hmm. The center of her peacock feather. Yeah, she's using my the brush, the Pan's Choice. Because of the long hairs. Yeah. Longer lines, longer hair, yeah. shorter lines, smaller details, shorter hair. Yeah. And it's not really... I, I have to say that I've seen people create uh, peacock feathers that are really f drawn as a feather. Yeah, real, uh, realistic. But realistic, she's but using the background, the colors, yeah. and just adding a few lines, and that's it. Yeah, it separates it, and mm -hmm. it creates that, uh, that flowing effect of the peacock feather, which yeah. is really a cool way to do it. It's abstracted. Yeah, and because of the foil underneath, it's beautiful for that shine. But she doesn't even really follow the shape of the foil. No, it's just she there, and and she now gives a, a smaller elements to 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 fixate the design, yeah. as it were. I've seen a lot of people creating peacock feathers in my life, but I've never seen it like quite like this. the center of the feather, the eye of the feather. And now she cured it for, I think, one and a half minutes? I think 30, 30 seconds. To get, have a little bit more sticky residue. The sticky uh, residue, yeah. And the colorful chrome, the golds. I really love this color. Yeah, it's a bit, it, little bit towards lime, huh? Lime greenish, yeah, it's beautiful. And the silicone shaper, because with the silicone, silicone shaper, you can really push it in there. Mm -hmm. Glass polish. Yeah, I and mean, blue, <laughs> surprise. Of course, <laughs> and the yellow. And as I said, you can mix them together, and Julia is showing you that. And the red. Cyan, cyan yes. blue. Yeah. And now, in between the lines that were created with the liner gel, She's adding the glass gel polish, and now uh, the effect of that is that the color underneath changes a little bit because she uses only a small amount mm -hmm. and mixing it to create uh, different shades of green towards brown. Yeah. And that's why she adds the uh, red also the to red, it. Yeah. And that, of course, brings part of the design back to the background, part of the design pops up. Mm -hmm. Really enjoy to look at. And it looks so simple. Well, and that and is the fun about Julia's yeah. art. Yeah. It's like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. It's really smart use, uh, using your product. It's also frustrating. Yeah, a bit. Because but then yeah. I think, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> <laughs> so extreme out top gel. Just the huge difference eh, with, the, with the heart of the peacock Beautiful. feather, because it really gives it a lot of depth. Yeah. And it's just that. All of the colors are already in. Yeah. And of course, line it your white. And I also find it very smart that she uses the With silicone the sh yeah. shaper to get it out of the I jar. I need to do that. Yeah. So these neon pigments, you can mix neon pigments. Do you mix the neon pigments directly in the white liner gel or do you make a pre-mix with clear? Because I see people do that sometimes as well. A pre-mix with clear? Yeah, so yeah. With first with clear build, uh, base and top, mm -hmm. mixing the pigment and then mixing it with the oh, uh, liner gel. Oh, you try that. I mix it... Uh, uh, straight in. Straight in, yeah. And then, oh, it is really, it is... 
uh, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful. Uh, 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 Amazing. And the neon pigments tend to get a little pastel neon, so it's really, yeah. really beautiful. <laughs> Follow her on Instagram. I wow. don't know what to say. We're speechless. We're speechless. We're always speechless yes, we're after <laughs> Julia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, next week, I promise you, we will have something really exciting. Oh, yeah. Because Julia is going to show us how to create a face of a very famous actor. And I asked her to create this face, and we'll see what's, uh, how that works. It's going to be a longer show next week, because mm -hmm. it's quite a long demonstration, but really amazing. Yeah, worthwhile. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, we saw it, uh, I saw it today. It was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. We hope that when we're able to travel again, and everything opens up in a couple of mm. months from now, that Julia also will come to Holland to train our trainers, but also our trainer nail technicians, and to do some more demos here in the studio. Can't wait. Yeah, cannot wait as well. So, next week, as we also already mentioned, Julia Vorobieva will show us how to create a man's face on the nail. And you are doing something next week as well, huh? Yes, I'm going to create the man's body yeah. on the nail. So, well, a body is easier to do than a face, trust me. <laughs> but then when we combine the two, we have a whole man, or at least the torso <laughs> of the man. That's a collaboration between <laughs> artists, that's cool. <laughs> Overseas, <laughs> over continents, yeah. we go wherever we want to go. And, of course, we'll also have a demonstration of Natalia Gitsenka, of Julia, and also Katarina. one of yours, and Katarina. Who wasn't in uh, this not week, but uh, not tonight, next week, but yeah. next week again with yeah. flowers, I think. Yeah. So join us next week at eight on YouTube, Magnetic Nail Talk, and thank you for watching. And we will end this show with uh, the commercial for our hygiene products, mm -hmm. the hygiene products that are so important nowadays. Our hygiene line is called Dizzy Side and consists of many products. So have a look.